so for the demonstration uh, of uh, API security with WC2 Ident server, I'm using a setup like this. We will have API manager as the API management solution and Ident server as the security provider or the key manager. And in API manager, we will have a sample application which is which subscribes to an API called Pisa Shack API. That API will have two endpoints uh, with a get operation for menu and a post operation for the endpoint. Menu endpoint uh, does not have any scope restrictions, but post order endpoint will have will be protected by scope call and order. And then when the application get created in API manager side through uh, DCR endpoints, that is dynamic client registration endpoints, O2 service provider will be created in added service side. And there, um, I will enable a role-based scope validation so that in issuing tokens for a particular user or allowing uh, we will check whether that uh, use have the associated with that scope. And also I will enable a role to authentication capability. And then I will use SACMAL engine authorization. We will have two users called John and Jane. Jane will have the role called customer to the scope uh, that is protecting the uh, order endpoint. So there are the scenario in the demo will be a secured API with the token generated with authorization code grant. So basically a particular application, the piece of application uh, wants to access the menu API hosted in protected by API manager. Uh, for that, uh, the, when the when a user uh, logs into the piece of application, uh, application will uh, receive a token to access the API on behalf of the user using authorization code grant. Then we will talk about implicit, implicit token revocation when user updates his password. So the same user uh, using the self-care portal in identity server will update his password. Uh, so after that, the token should be implicitly revoked because his credentials are updated. And then obtain token with scope and invoke a scope protected API. So uh, now uh, the application will send a request, authentication request to identify server with the scope, uh, with, the, with the scope. And then uh, identity server will at the point of authentication will check whether the whether this use, the user who is trying to log in have that scope related to him through his role. So their scope validation will happen. So once uh, that's done, it will return a token and the application will send that token to the API manager with the scope. And then at the API manager level, it will check whether this token contains the required scope and allow. Then uh, we will talk about explicit token revocation using our revocation endpoints. Then fine print access control with SACMAL policy. And additionally, uh, about show our self care portal and admin portal in detail. So, uh, first of all, I will show in the API manager admin portal under key manager section, how identity service configured as a key manager. So all the endpoints related to key manager and application registration is given here. Client registration endpoint of identity server, introspection endpoint, token endpoint, remote endpoint, this info endpoint, authorization endpoint, scopes endpoint, so that app API manager can talk to these uh, endpoints and do the necessary communications to achieve the API security and the grant types. Likewise. Then 
we have the API manager publisher where we uh, have the PCSHAC API deployed. And here we can see that post order is protected with add order scope while menu get is not protected uh, with the scope, uh, but just using normal uh, token security. And then we have the developer portal where the piece of uh, application called pizza order application is created and it is subscribed to the pizza check API. So if we go to this API, it will show the subscription pizza order application. So here under pizza order application, we will have production keys, the consumer key and the consumer secret and the token endpoint of identity server, the working point of identity server and callback URL of the application. Then this is the identity server admin portal. So once you create an application in developer portal, it will be created as a service provider here through our DCR endpoints. So if I go there, can see under auth configuration, the same credentials are here. And additionally, we can enable, I have enabled role-based scope validator so that when, when a user is authenticating, we do that scope validation. And I have enabled token issue type as JWT. And then, uh, we go to local and outbound configuration. I have configured advanced configuration for two-factor authentication. Uh, that is first step is basic authentication with username and password. Second step can be either TOTP or SMS OTP. Uh, for it to be a role-based two-factor authentication, I have used adaptive authentication. So I dragged and dropped this role-based template here and update the role I want to step up. So I have enabled that any user who is having customer role uh, should be stepped up with the SMS OTP or TOTP. So that's the logic here. You can define, you can use any of the templates in the right side, or you can write your own uh, logic here. And then for the users, I have John at abc.com. If you view his roles, he has just some internal role. And then if you take Jane at abc.com, she has the customer role. Okay, so first I will uh, send a token authorization code grant request from the PISA application to the identity server to retrieve a token. So I will log in as john at abc.com, this password. So after that, you can see we get authorization code. Then we can invoke the authorization code grant in this Dryden server. For that authorization credentials, I have passed the client ID and client secret of the application. The application now we sent token request will it will receive access token so now what happens is uh, the application will normally send this uh, in the api request and the api manager will first do a inspection that is it will call 
established right in service introspection endpoint and validate this token. So here it says this is an active token, so it's validated. Then only uh, it will allow the request to carry on. So if we, like now it's invoking the get menu API with the bearer token authorization. We will paste the new token and then we'll send the request. Now we will get the menu. So now it's okay. So the next step we wanted to show was like implicit revocation of the token. So we will go to the user portal or the self-care portal of identity server for the same user, John. So apparently he is blocked because I was for piece app here. So it's single sign on there. So under security tab. So I will take it as a chance to show you our self-care portal around. So this is um, this is more important when you are building a CIM solution, having a self-care portal for users, specifically when you want to comply to privacy and regulation compliances, especially for GDPR, having a self-care portal is very important. Now, if you see here, the use can change his password, user can set account recovery options to set up his security questions. He can set up his multi-factor authentication like uh, the SMS uh, OTP number. Uh, he can register his uh, FIDO devices. He can register authentication app, authenticate app for TOTP. He can view his sessions and terminate them. And he can revoke consents to the application he has given likewise. So this is very, this is a section of GDPR, like the user have, should have the ability to revoke his consents at any given time. And then uh, if you go to personal info, we have the user profile, the user can add more details to his profile, he can link his accounts, his social accounts likewise, he can view external logins and he can download his profile as a JSON file. So in GDPR, it is a requirement that uh, a user should be able to download his details uh, preserved by the system at any given time. So that's why we have provided this feature. Okay, so let me go and change password for John. I will give the current password and give a new one. So submit. So password is changed. Now I will go to the introspect endpoint. I have the same token. Now when I invoke it, I will get a false that this token is invalid. That's correct. Now it's implicitly revoked. So if I go to the get menu API and invoke it now, it will give me invalid credentials. So now I will show the next one that is uh, invoking score protected API. So I'm going to uh, request for a token with the uh, scope and order. So I will uh, try to log in as John. So before that, uh, I will show you the scope management rest API we have. So here I, here I have passed like show me the scope bindings for this add order scope. So if I get it, it will show that it's bind to customer role. So now we'll log in as John, but he doesn't have the customer role associated to him. So therefore he will get an error saying invalid scope. So see that that is one level of scope validation during authentication. With a, the use is associated with this scope. Now uh, I will remove, I will have a new tab since John's session is there. I will again try to log in as Jane, who essentially have that role as associated to her. Now you can see 
that I got the prompt for SMS OTP, OT, OTP since uh, the two-factor authentication since uh, she has the customer role associated with her. So I will now click the sign in with the SMS OTP option now and I'm waiting for my OTP to receive that. So I got my OTP. Zero eight four four seven eight authenticator and granting permission for the add order. Okay, now I get an authorization code because um, my scope validations are successful. Now I will, now the application will pass this code and we'll try to get a token to use on behalf of the user and it will get a token. Now the application will pass this token to the add order API and then at the API manager level, it will do the introspection of this token. So I will see whether it's a valid one. Yes, it's valid. Uh, now we will call the add order API with the authorization of token bearer. can see now we get a successful response the order is added and now uh, I will show like explicit revocation by invoking identity server revoke endpoint so the other authorization is client credentials of the application and I will pass the new token I got and I will uh, revoke it. Now I will get a successful response that it was revoked. Now if I introspect it, it should be uh, shown as uh, uh, invalid token. Okay. Now I will uh, show a fine-grained uh, access control with uh, Zachmel. So in this is identity server's uh, admin portal. Here under entitlement, we have the we have the SACML configuration where we can define SACML policy. So in the policy administration, we can write our own SACML policies. So I have written a piece of check order policy. So what it basically says is that if a request is a post request action is coming to a resource with the format of order. Uh, and if that uh, request is coming between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., then only permit it. Then only permit. Any other time, deny it. So, so once we have that policy, you can do like publish to PDP and in the policy decision point, it will be published. So that now anyone invoking the SACML uh, REST APIs to get a policy decision, We'll evaluate with this policy and we'll get a response. So, so I have the SACML evaluate policy uh, endpoint. This is entitlement decision PDP. So I will pass the request as, uh, so we can take this as example where uh, post order request, API request come to API gateway and API gateway before allowing the request to proceed, we'll do a call to WS2 identity server SACML endpoint. So here, let's say uh, the request came around 910, it will pass those de details uh, and then expect a response. So here, the authorization uh, is uh, a token, we are a token. So for that application, I will use client credentials grant. So basically API Manager will send the client credential grants uh, request with scope for SACML uh, related policy, evalu policy evaluation related scope uh, with uh, client credentials, the application. And it will receive a token. So passing that token to 
second endpoint. Let's see what we get as the response. Now we can see it's permit. So this uh, once so this response will come to API gateway, and once it, he sees its permit, it will allow the request to uh, carry on with other scope based validation and so on. So let's say I updated it to 5:10, 5:10 p.m. So it exists that time. Now, if I format it, uh, here you can see it's denied. So now the API request won't be allowed to go further. So that's how you can achieve find the access control with Safma. Next, uh, I will show you, like I think I already showed, the showed you the self-care portal, but we can do with it. So this is the identity service admin portal. Basically, here we support adding and managing of users. You can add users and roles. You can view them. You can view the users. We can view roles. And roles can be given permissions. Likewise. And then uh, we have support for user stores. That is uh, uh, like... Uh, databases or so Active Directory or LDAP, you can define multiple user stores and add users to different user stores. For example, if I add a new user, I can select to which user store I want to add the user, likewise. And we can have like whether the admin define the password or uh, we use the ask password from user and send an email for the user to reset his password. And we have claims, which are essentially users attributes. We define them in a format like this. You can add new claims. This claim component, claim handling is very important, like when doing claim transformation, when because normally applications is using a different jargon to define its user attributes. Uh, and then maybe external IDP is using different jargon. So having a claim handler, uh, the claim transformation WS Rider Server will do to the local uh, claim uh, URF format and will handle claim transformations. Then service providers, I expression, explained earlier that any application you create in API managed to get added here. So you can add your own applications uh, also in add-in server. So if I go to like some application like pickup manager, some other application, you can define per auth and outbound configuration. You can just use basic authentication or federation authentication with Google, Facebook, uh, likewise, or advanced configuration with adaptive authentication. And then identity providers is where you can define external identity providers that you would like to federate, like Google, Facebook, Microsoft Azure, etc. You can even define a custom IDP as well. So these are like you can define it you like. So here in the federate authentication section, you can define the protocol it's using. Now for this Microsoft Azure AD. I have connected with Microsoft Azure AD endpoints and defined that federation. Then uh, this is the policy, SACML policy engine part here. Then we have workflow support, approval workflow where like when, when a new user joins, uh, we can define like uh, first to approve from the HR admin, then by the higher management, like approval workflow we can define here. Yeah, this is a workflow I have done earlier, multi-step. And challenge questions also you can define here. Uh, email templates. So if you go to email templates for, uh, we have a set of email templates for uh, account enabling, password reset, account lock likewise. So. Here you can customize the image theme as well. 
for the email template. You can uh, manage key stores and then manage consent purposes. You can define the purpose for a particular consent and you can manage OIDC scopes likewise. And then, uh, yeah, you can, uh, we have multi-tenant support where you can add new tenants for the system likewise. So we now uh, with our latest release, all these uh, Operations are REST API enabled, so you can even create your own portal using our REST APIs if needed. Yeah, so that, that's it for my demo. Uh, thank you, everyone.